All right, man. Cheers. 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 We got your Al Morty and I got the, my Azakar. You're going to have a little bit of this later, but. Oh, God. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Um, yeah, I felt uh, I felt a little bit festive. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, Awamori, uh, as you probably know, is from uh, Okinawa. Yeah, right. And uh, traditionally, yeah, um, a lot of people visit Okinawa during yeah. Obon season. Okay. Um, just as vacation. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm a huge fan of Okinawan culture. I got yeah. like Shisa in front of my doors. Oh, Shisa! What Shisa are like the dogs? The dogs. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Cool. Wow. Um, I'm not religious at all, but I, I I'm really attached to those for some okay. reason. I don't know why. Um, so. Uh, I've got a little bit of experience with Okinawan okay. culture, and um, one of the things I instantly attached to was I do. Well, I mean, I mean, come on, we we know, we know you're like your alcohol. I mean, I do, I do too, but you like it more than I do. But. This uh, this stuff, it's an acquired taste. Yeah, <laughs> and I by think acquired so. taste, it's like if you can drink rubbing alcohol, you will like this. Yeah, see, for me, I'm still more of like I, I've never been into distilled alcohol so much. I've always mm-hmm. liked the like the fermented alcohol more, yeah. but I'm one of these days. I'm going to get into this, but, yeah. but yeah, so actually though, I really want you to tell me that story again so everyone can hear. I mean, today in today's episode, we're going to be talking about socializing and like yeah. how to make friends here. What was it like making friends here? Yeah. Um, but before that, do you want to share like your story you share with me about this? I'm worried about, <laughs> I mean, you don't have to share that yeah, if you yeah, don't want yeah. to. Um, so, uh, my, my ex is yeah. Okinawan. Yeah. And by the way, just remember, make sure you're almost kissing this. Like you almost want to feel, you almost want to feel the foam on your lip. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> um, where was I? Yeah. So, so your ex. Yeah. Well, I guess Aomori. this is my new relationship. Now. <laughs> so my ex ex. Um, but yeah. So my ex-girlfriend's Okinawan. Yeah. And uh, so her dad uh, was a very prominent figure mm-hmm. in the police force in Naha. Okay. And so, uh, before going to Okinawa, she told yeah. me like, hey, you know, my dad's a strong drinker. Okay. He really likes Awomori. Okay. And, you know, if if we're going to, you know, get married, like, it's really important that you can you can drink okay. at the same level as this guy. And I'm thinking, I'm, I was a Marine. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. I was also a frat boy when I was in college. Yeah. Like, I know how to drink. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. This man... This man, like, I thought yeah. that I was, like, here. Yeah. And the average person was, like, here for yeah, drinking yeah. alcohol. Yeah. Now, it turns out, like, I was playing in the minor leagues, and this guy's doing major league okay. baseball with his drinking. Because okay. um, when I first got there, mm-hmm. uh, they were having a dinner party okay. with with her family. So everyone everyone's crammed in this house. We got these like this really big, long table, mm-hmm. all sorts of food. I expected traditional Japanese food. Yeah, I yeah. was... Very surprised mm-hmm. to see pizza. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, Okinawa is, like, they have a lot of American food They do. There. They yeah. do. Um, I was really surprised about that. Uh, and so, I, at first, I, I... Sorry, I'm going to go on a little yeah, tangent no, about going, this pizza because I was so shocked about it. Um, I thought, it's like, oh, wow. Okay. Well, they just know an American's coming and they know we mm-hmm. like pizza, which I do like pizza. Yeah, yeah. Um, and... Uh, so I, I, I talked to her mom. And I was like, "Why? Why did you? Why did you make yeah. pizza?" And it turns out they just like pizza. Okay. There's no reason behind it. They just like pizza. <laughs> just like pizza. So they just had a pizza party. Yeah. Uh, anyways, so I show up mm-hmm. and uh, naturally I have to sit next to her dad. Cause okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh wow, you're you know you're getting serious with yeah. my daughter. You're like I need to, I need yeah, to yeah, gauge yeah. you up man to man. And uh, that's something that's exchanged internationally. That's that's not unique to any culture. Okay. And so. I, I'll never forget the first image I saw of this man. Okay. He had a red solo cup. Yeah. The same, the same plastic cups that I was using mm-hmm. as a frat boy in college. Yeah. A red solo cup had a bottle of Alamori exactly the same as this. Okay. I kid you not, he would open it up with his red solo cup and just dump the whole thing in and just drink it like what? it was water. What? And I just, I, my jaw was open and I, there was that moment. So actually, I know, I know this is really late, but can you explain what Al Morty is for people who don't know? Uh, I, to be honest, I don't really know what it is. Okay. <laughs> it's like distilled sake, I want to say, or. Yeah. Well, so actually, let me look at the thing. So I know it's distilled. So it's really, really, yeah. It's basically like rice whiskey. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, you definitely can get that taste. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but it was it was that moment yeah. that, that I knew that I was I was done. Yeah, there was no way I was yeah. going to survive that night. Yeah. Um, so I kept up with him for like the mm-hmm. first hour. For the first hour, yeah. The first and then, hour, and then it's just like, dude, he brought over like, uh, he brought over his brother's kid. Um, yeah. And this kid was like 17 at the time. I think okay. he, no, he's 18. He just graduated high school. And okay. he's like, oh, it's all right. You're a man now. You can come drink with us too. And yeah. That kid started drinking me under the table. I'm what? just like, what is going on here, man? Man. <laughs> like, man. Oh. Dude, but yeah, good times. Okinawa. I still have never been to Okinawa, but I want to go someday. I, I, I had a great time. Yeah. And in fact, uh, I think, I don't think it's a place that I would ever want to retire because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm more of a mountain guy. Okay. Um, like if I was going to choose a place to retire in Japan, it would absolutely be Hokkaido. Really? Oh God. I love okay. Sapporo, man. Okay. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's more weather that I, or it's weather than I'm more used to. Okay. Um, but Okinawa is just a great place to go. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I did a lot of fun things there. We, w- we went to the aquarium. We went mm-hmm. to the pineapple farm. We went to the beach, of course. Okay. Uh, I <laughs> got another funny story about scuba okay. diving. Okay. So go for it. We we're so there's there's these blue caves that are really like advertised. Blue there. caves. Yeah. So there are these underwater caves that yeah. you can go scuba diving in. And okay. I, I, I've I've gone scuba diving once before, mm-hmm. and it was a blast. So I wanted to go while I was there. Mm-hmm. And so we signed up for scuba diving Mm -hmm. and, uh, it turns out my ex has never been scuba diving before. Oh, really? So (laughs) we never got out of the training area. So we were like, I I kid you not, we were in like maybe two meters of water. Okay. (laughs) She couldn't stay underwater for like more than like 20 seconds, which, so we got to go scuba diving in like kiddie pool. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But you couldn't actually like go scuba diving in the real. Yeah. I was a little bit bummed out. I mean, we still had a good time, you know, we got, we got underwater pictures and yeah, yeah, that was a fun time. Um, but yeah, I really want to go back and go scuba diving. Yeah. I I had a really good time. You know, so one of my, one of my, um, pretty good friends, he was one of my roommates in college. He, um, I lived in a house with like seven friends, six friends. I was the seventh guy and I was kind of like running the house kind of yeah but um but yeah he was a really good friend of mine and we worked on uconnect for a while okay but um yeah he he's japanese and he just got like last year he got like a spear fishing license and he's in he lives in nagasaki now because in nagasaki is like one of the few places you can legally spear fish in japan yeah and now he's doing some sort of he was actually like on nhk and stuff like he during the corona virus stuff whatever he um he and a couple of his friends they lost their jobs so they just went on um on a desert desert island and they just like lived the three of them <laughs> fishing. <laughs> That's cool though. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, really yeah. cool. Yeah, so when you say scuba diving, I always think about my friend Ken, oh, you know. Man. But anyways, so let's yeah. let's try and bring this back to the topic today, sure. which is um socializing and making friends. Ooh, yeah, that's a Okay, so I can already see from there. You're like, ooh, what where's that coming from? Um well I I, I not not so much of a like oof this is a scary topic but yeah. oof this is I have, I have so much to talk about here okay okay um let's go so uh i'm sure i'm sure you have this similar experience okay. here um talking to a lot of people mm-hmm. specifically foreigners but uh, also okay. like japanese people living in tokyo mm-hmm. uh specifically um a lot of people i've talked to have mm-hmm. told me I, I don't have any friends yeah right you know, yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't do anything it's on the so weekend. Hard to I feel make friends here. Yeah, and, and uh, specifically a jet program. I know that they have a, like a lot of counseling mm-hmm. services, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of people that get depressed mm-hmm. here. Yeah, um, yeah, that's suicidal really even. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you literally hear about suicides happening mm-hmm. almost on a daily basis, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Um, that's always been something that really perpe- or perplexed me. Yeah, because um, Japan's a very like community oriented thing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like it really, to be honest, I, I feel like I end up participating a lot more in communities than I, than I ever did in the U S really. Like, yeah. like, what do you, what do you mean by that? Um, oh, you just get invited to everything and maybe, well, maybe if, that's if just you, me. If you have friends, you get invited <laughs> to things. That's just me. Yeah. Um, but like, like who, who invites you to these things? Like give, give me like specific examples. So, so, uh, a really easy one yeah. is coworkers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're coworkers. Um, but uh, kind of going with that coworker thing. Uh, when it, when I hear people tell me I have a really hard time making friends, it's it, it's always been something that really perplexed me. Mm-hmm. And I I think partly because 
I I pretend that I'm an introvert. Okay. I like to pretend that I, I don't like yeah, you, outside, yeah, but you're, you're not an introvert, I, dude. I'm a very social person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just hide it. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, even even uh, not even thinking about that, I I always felt that that was really perplexing because mm-hmm. you you were forced to interact with so many different people here. Mm-hmm. You like working in your company, you're like. Um, you know, you have a lot of coworkers, especially mm-hmm. like if you're working at a school, you mm-hmm. have a ton of teachers. There's usually yeah, yeah. like a group of young teachers, yeah, right? Yeah. And um, all it takes is just, you know, talking a little bit okay. and, then, you know, moving the conversation forward and then, okay. hey, like, you know, let's go so, get drinks afterwards. Okay. So, so for you, like you were able to make connections with people through mm-hmm. mainly your work and um, yeah. you becoming friendly with people and they, they sure. invited you to stuff. Yeah. Right. Um, so that's, that's one avenue. Okay. Right. Um, so I, most of my Japanese friends Mm -hmm. are my coworkers. Okay. Um, and I, I spend the most time with them than I do with uh, any of my friends. It's because I see them every day. Yeah. 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 Um, but, uh, another really interesting thing about Japan Mm -hmm. is there's communities for everything. For any hobby that you could possibly think of, there is a group of people that do it here. Wait, especially in Tokyo, there's yes. like so many people. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, you know, I cannot stress this enough. It doesn't matter what your hobby is. There is a group of people that does it. Um, yeah, you know, it's kind of scary that you say that because I can think of a lot of really strange things, sure. but there's definitely communities for those things. Yeah. yeah. Um, and all it takes is a little bit of initiative. Okay. Um, now... I'm not going to go ahead and say that that's really easy for a yeah, lot yeah. of people. Um, specifically, I, I noticed that um, it, it seems like a lot of people who end up moving here mm-hmm. um, tend to be a little bit more on the introverted yeah. side. I don't know why that is. I mean, I have some um, I have some ideas for that. Yeah. It's just like anime culture. Like, okay, so probably like 95% of the especially mm. American people mm. who come to Japan or who are interested in Japan, yeah. their first entry is anime. Sure. You know, mine was Dragon Ball Z. I like yeah. dry, drawing Dragon Ball Z characters. And then someone was like, oh, that's anime. I'm like, what's anime? It's yeah. cartoons from Japan. I was like, oh. Yeah. Interesting. Like, that's that's a lot of people's entry. And so that tends to be like, mm. m- like shyer people, more introverted people. Sure. You know? Yeah. Um, so I think, I think that... Uh, that specific personality okay. type of person might struggle with that that okay. um, that kind of mm-hmm. a- initiative. Yeah. Um, but my argument yeah. is that's not unique to Japan. Yeah, it's. I think it's very common with you know what I mean with a lot of places, especially like nowadays, because people yeah. are like they they rely on like technology so that they don't have to take the first step. But yeah. I'm actually kind of curious to hear for your situation, like sure. in your group of friends you have now, mm-hmm. like because you came from jet really like not knowing anyone and yeah. now you seem to Still be pretty don't. sociable you like <laughs> hang out with people right yeah so like what was the flow for you to go from not knowing anyone to making friends and hanging out with them because i'm also i came here self-employed so yeah. my story is really different from yours yeah but man. i want to hear you because yours yours is more kind of like the more common absolutely flow i think absolutely um so what did you do personally in your personal situation well for me personally, yeah. I just I wander. <laughs> I just go out and wander, man. Okay. Um, my first, so my first two weeks of okay. living here in Tokyo, um, I didn't have any money. First yeah. of all, okay, I was just broke. Okay. Um, I th- I really underestimated how expensive it is to move here. It cost yeah, me yeah. about five thousand dollars to move here. Okay. Um, you know, just because I found out I was moving to Tokyo, and turns out that's an expensive place. Yeah, to right, live. right. You know, and then there's all the there's all the hidden, fun surprises of buying a new apartment here. Yeah, like, right. Oh, like, hey, by the way, here's like six months of rent. Yeah, that you're yeah, yeah. You have to pay, to pay four to six months of rent <laughs> it's in advance. Ridiculous, yeah, man. we can talk about that another time for sure. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so I I I came yeah. over here and. Mm-hmm. I, I had saved up and I was like, all right, cool. I'll get an apartment, you know, I'll get all this furniture mm-hmm. and I'll have a little bit of spending money to go out and do some stuff. Yeah, yeah, I right. got a month off before I start school. This is going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, so I get here, spend all of my money <laughs> just getting the apartment. I had no furniture. I kid you not. I had yeah. no, fr- I didn't even have a bed. Okay. For my first month. 
I had a quilt that I slept on, dude. <laughs> and I was sleeping on uh, my pillow was my sweatshirt, dude. Um, that I, was I just I just want to tell you I came to Japan with 10k and I was like okay ten thousand dollars this is great and I yeah I partied a lot yeah but after month one I had three thousand dollars left yeah. after moving in and everything yeah. it was crazy. <laughs> Um, uh, oh man, it's expensive. Yeah, it, the the daily life, like mm-hmm. once you're settled in, it's actually I I find that I I spend less money than I did when I was in the U S. Yeah, yeah. on day to day. Yeah, yeah. But it's that first hump. Yeah, getting you know? in. Yeah, oh, man. Um, it's really expensive. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, so I didn't have any money. Yeah. So I was just like, well, I can't go to Shibuya or you know like go, uh, like Roppongi or yeah. you know all the places that are you know fun to go to. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just gonna wander around. Okay. All right. And uh, it was it was getting to about a month. Okay. Um, and I literally had forty dollars to my name at this point. Okay. I had four thousand yen. <sighs> that was it. Okay. <laughs> and I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna go out drinking tonight. <clears throat> I I can I can survive not eating food for a few days. Yeah. I haven't done this. I haven't I haven't gone out drinking in Japan yet. Yeah. You know, I screw it. I'm just gonna go three days without eating. It's fine. I have water. Okay. I'm gonna go out drinking tonight. So I just uh, I was living in Kamata, which is yeah, yeah, yeah. South Tokyo. Okay. And uh, it's this rundown like salaryman area. Okay. Right. What salaryman? Uh, so like kind of like a businessman area. Like yeah, just like, basically like working. Yeah, it's it's suits. like we're 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 a lot of businessmen like to yeah. go after hours and okay. you know just drink and yeah, you yeah. know go to restaurants and stuff. So I decided to just wander around mm-hmm. there. And uh, I was really surprised mm-hmm. um, because I found two specific bars. The first bar that I found was a country western bar. What? I, I'm not even Country joking. western. Country western. Okay. As in country music. Like yeah, American yeah, 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 country yeah, right, music. Right, right, right. Um, you know, I was walking by and I heard that mm-hmm. like that guitar twang. Okay. That's really unique to country yeah, music. Yeah, yeah, right. Because the door was open and I, yeah. I was like, where did that come from? Yeah. It sounds like country music. And I looked in and inside the bartender had like this giant black fuzzy 10 gallon hat. Like the okay. you know, traditional giant Texas black hat. Fuzzy yes, 10 gallon yeah. hat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so a 10 gallon hat, just for those that don't know, is like a really big cowboy hat. Yeah. yeah. And I uh, <laughs> just saw it and was like, this is insane. I got to yeah. go in here. This is amazing. Um, cause was I, it, was it like an authentic cowboy hat or was it clearly like a prop? Oh, it was, it was definitely an authentic cowboy okay. hat. Okay. Um, um, but yeah, it's, it's like that, uh, I don't want to say it was the felt fuzzy cause that sounds more propish, but yeah, it, was, yeah, it was some yeah. kind of fuzzy material. Yeah, maybe, yeah, okay. Maybe suede. Okay. It was like maybe suede. It was okay. Suede. A suede 10 gallon hat. Okay. And, uh, Jeez. I'm just you know, imagining this right now. It was in, it was crazy. I was so shocked by it because yeah. it's like the last thing I expected yeah, to yeah. you know see in a bar just wandering around yeah, in, yeah. in like the, almost the slums of yeah. Tokyo. Yeah, you go to, uh, you go to Japan and you're you're in a country western bar. <laughs> yeah, it's like what is going on here? So I sit down yeah. and uh, yeah, at this point I don't know any Japanese. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I sit down. It turns out the bartender knows like a little English. Okay. Mostly just from movies, right? Yeah, yeah. And I had just a good time yeah. talking to this guy because I was the first foreigner yeah, that's yeah. ever come into that bar. Yeah. And uh, so the guys just started talking to me about like country music mm-hmm. and uh, like a Western movies. Yeah. And <laughs> like starts talking about how he loves John Wayne. And so he's the owner. He turns out he was the owner of the bar. Yeah, yeah, and he he was just so enamored with uh, like you know country mm-hmm. culture that uh, he opened up a bar. Okay, and I thought that was really cool. Yeah, and so I spent a good time there, mm-hmm. and then I decided, okay, well, I'm I'm gonna you know say goodbye to this guy and mm-hmm. go on to the next bar, and uh, the next bar was completely the opposite. Okay, it was a reggae bar. What a reggae, reggae bar? Reggae bar. Okay. And, uh, again, it was one of those things where I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I did not expect to see it, but I, I think the, the reggae bar mm-hmm. surprised me a little bit less than the country one. Cause okay. I think reggae is more, uh, recognized okay. worldwide than country music is. But, uh, yeah, I walked in there and again, there's another Japanese guy behind the yeah. bar with dreads, like with dreads. full on, just full like on dreads. super long dreads. 
And, you know, I talked I talked to him again. Yeah. And a similar story. This guy's just, like, really into reggae. He's yeah. visited Jamaica many times and just fell in love with it and opened up his own bar here. Wow. And it was kind of my first taste into understanding, like, themed bars here. Yeah, okay. There's there, not only bars, but there's a lot of people who, like, travel the world yeah, yeah. and they come back and it's like, hey, you know what? I like this culture. Yeah. I'm going to open up a bar. Right. You know? Right. Um, and I, I love that because... I had instantly when I was walking mm. in, I had no uh, feeling of like pressure or anxiety because okay. I, I already had something that I could talk to somebody about. About reggae or because it was yeah. a, it was like a theme. So yeah. like you could at least talk about that theme. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I really recommend for maybe people who are struggling here or mm-hmm. people who are thinking of moving here, but they're a little bit hesitant because mm-hmm. of, of that difficulty curve. Mm-hmm. Um, just wander around. And just go into some place that looks cool. Okay. You know? And okay. it, like, you don't even need to understand Japanese. Mm-hmm. Honestly, the, most people are so friendly here and so excited yeah. to see somebody else who's like interested in yeah. what they like that they're, they're happy to, to, you know, just try and fumble through a conversation yeah. just to try and talk. Yeah. I mean, so I've, I've definitely had that experience. So I, I've also had the opposite experience too, mm. but like I, um, so when I first came to Japan, I was living in Nakano, which is on the Western. <laughs> I'm so jealous. <laughs> Keep, continue, no, continue. No, 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 no. Why are you jealous of that? I, I, knowing Nakano now. Yeah, yeah. I love Nakano, man. Yeah, I, wish, I wish I started there. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing how it's like, for the longest time, it was like Japan stuck out of, stuck in like the 1970s or the 80s. Now it's been changing these past like five years or so. Yeah. But um yeah, there are just so many little bars and little restaurants and stuff. And yeah. I walked into a couple, and they were first like, "Oh, do you? Ah, sorry, no English." But then there were other people that were just like, "Hey, come yeah. on, come on, come on!" It was yeah. great. It was yeah. great. I mean, it helps that I could speak Japanese too. Yeah. But yeah, I met, I met. I didn't meet people that I stayed in contact with. But like, okay, I have one. I have one story that was really formative in, um, like my social life in. Hmm. In Japan. So basically, this was um, 2014. Mm-hmm. And I was, it was the night before my final exam, my first final exam Ooh. for Aoyama Gakuin University. Okay. And um, I'm walking home. And so I, so for, for you guys who know Tokyo, I, I used to, so I used to live in Nakano, which is like on the JR line, but I actually live between the Chuo line and the Seibu Shinjuku line, mm-hmm. like the Seibu Shinjuku line kind of goes up to Saitama. It kind of goes into a more residential area. But so I didn't live in Nakano. Nakano. I lived a little bit farther away from the station, but it was really like old style, like really, it wasn't like Shitamachi style, but yeah. there were a lot of like older people that lived there their whole lives, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm walking down the street and near my house and there's no one else on the street. And this drunk guy comes up to me and says to me in Japanese, uh, I'm sorry, can you tell me where the... Tr- oh, he sees my face and he sees that I'm like not Japanese and he, he assumes I can't speak. So I'm just, I say to him, I'm like, I don't know, right? And he's just like, uh, ah, so, so that, man, I want to, he's like, I want to go to the station. By the way, your English, your Japanese is super good. I was like, thank you. He's like, uh, let me take you to the station. He's like, okay. He's super drunk. He's like, your English, su- your Japanese is super good. How, how did you learn? Was like, I had just learned for a long time. So like, okay, um, so actually, I think my last train is gone. Do you want to get a drink? <laughs> I was just like, what? <laughs> I was like, Shh, okay, yeah. And he's he didn't seem like a dangerous guy, right? Sure. So I was just going to him. I was like, okay, I'm not from around here. Do you know any bars that are open? And this hmm. is like close to the last train, right? I'm like, sorry, I don't know anywhere. He's like, oh. Your Japanese is really good. <laughs> it just keeps on going. And then, and then we see this guy who's like, so this is like a really old style shoten guy, like a little market street, right? Mm-hmm. That, um, like, if you think of Japan from the seventies, this is probably what was really common there. Sure. And um, it's the middle of the night. There's no one on the street, but there's this one guy just like smoking a cigarette outside. And this 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 guy goes out. He's like, oh, let me. I want to talk to that guy. So he goes over talking to the guy. He's like, hey, you know. This guy says there's a place that's open. Maybe we can go. And I'm like, dude, it's like midnight. Where? What place is open? So I go there, and it's this it's this dive bar called Okage that is open from 12 midnight to five in the morning. Nice. 
They and, know their clientele. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think what happened was they used to be open regularly, but then yeah. they realized they can like charge more at mm. late night. And oh, absolutely. So they just did that. And I remember walking in, and the you call him the Musta, the the owner, right? He's this huge mountain of a man. He has this huge belly, and he used to do kendo. Like he's built like a rock. Like I don't want to get into a fight with him; he'll kill me. But he had a really high pitched voice. So he's like, you know, say. Just like cool. So I go in and talk to go in there, and it's like all these people in their 40s and 50s who like just don't want to go home yet. Yeah. <laughs> and I've kind of like invaded their space. I'm like the foreign presence in these like Jonans on these people who have lived there. But everyone was really open and really nice. And I actually ended up staying there till four in the morning. Nice. I went home, I slept two hours, and then I took my final exam. There and you then go. I started going there like all the time. It was yeah. great. Yeah. It's... I, I still go there and the master sometimes like Hey, outside, that's pretty, you know, just kind of <laughs> yeah. like that. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, going wandering and being like, what would have happened if I had said no to the guy? Yeah, you know, yeah, I think uh, some. Uh, so I I spent a lot of time yeah. uh, in Japan during the summer and mm-hmm. when I was in high school and uh, next door to my host family mm-hmm. down in Hyogo is a American guy from California. Okay. He's lived here for 57 years what? now. What? Wow. He's a real crusty guy. Yeah. Um, and I, <laughs> I don't know if I would go so far as to say he's my mentor because he's okay. definitely done some very questionable things. Okay. But um, he's a really interesting guy. Okay. And I, I really respect the advice that mm-hmm. he does give me. Mm-hmm. Um, and... I, I visited Japan when I was in high school, mm-hmm. or uh, uh, I did, but it, sorry, I'm, I visited Japan mm-hmm. when I was in college about to yeah. graduate and enter the JET program. And when I was there, yeah. he said, Austin, you're about to move here. I'm going to give you some real solid advice okay. that I want you to promise me that you're going to do when you move here. Okay. I, said, I was expecting him to just be like, dude, just like download tinder as soon as you get here or is there some stupid thing like that because he always says that he's like oh man you just gotta get yourself a girlfriend (laughs) so i was i was mentally perfect i'm like this guy's gonna say some stupid crap but he's like i want you when you get off that plane do not say no to anything okay whatever whatever somebody invites you to whatever whatever experience you have as soon as you come here do not say no yeah and so I followed that advice yeah. and I have to say that was probably the best advice yeah. that I've ever had, um, upon coming here Okay, because it put me out of my comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. I, I was in a lot of situations like specifically just not being able to speak Japanese, yeah. but, but also just being in uncomfortable places, places mm-hmm. that are outside of my little safety yeah. bubble. You know, yeah. um, and exposed me to things. And I have to say, for the most part, mm-hmm. obviously, I was, you know, you got to be smart about things. Mm-hmm. Don't do stupid stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. if you see some shady stuff and someone's inviting you to go do it, eh, just maybe don't do it. Yeah. But um, I got to experience so many things here mm-hmm. that if I, like you said, mm-hmm. if you just had said no, mm-hmm. yeah, you don't get to experience that. Yeah. And I, I also feel like, so... So Japan is a really safe country. Yeah. So it's probably like the easiest place to not say no because like if I say no, what's going to happen? I'm going to if I say yes and it's a shit show. Yeah. What's going to happen? Well, it's going to be like, okay, I I have a boring time, right? Yeah. Whereas like if I'm in the states, oh, I'll get robbed. Sure. You know? Sure. Um so It's a lot safer. With that being said, yeah. I think um, there's some requirements to being an adult, an adult here. Okay. There's some, there's some social activities that I think if you do not participate in, yeah. in Japan, um, it, you'll find difficulty, uh, entering a community. Okay. Like what? Um, so the number one yeah. is drinking. Okay. I think if you are coming to Japan, you should try your hardest to just be able to drink. I'm not saying you need mm. to become an alcoholic. Yeah, yeah. I'm not even saying you really need to actually drink alcohol. Yeah. But you need to be comfortable in that environment. Yeah. Um, because drinking is, I'm sure you know, is yeah. such an important social yeah. aspect in Japan. Like people, like you, you, you almost like don't go drinking for the sake of drinking. Yeah. You do it just to talk. 
yeah. you know? And it's, it's where people go to like de-stress here. Yeah. You know? So like one thing that I found really interesting about that, cause that's really important, right? Yeah. Is, you know, there's so many people here who can't drink, mm. like they have, they're allergic to alcohol. They get sure. that Asian flush stuff, right? Yeah. So then why is it that people go, you know, but he- here's what I think. This is just kind of a, an idea that I have, right? Mm-hmm. Is, you know, so Japan is a really strong concept of uh, tatemaya and honne. So mm-hmm. tatemaya is like the face you show to everyone else and yes. honne is your real face, right? Yes. Honne means like real sound. So it's mm-hmm. a real sound of your voice, right? Um, and when in Japan, it's actually okay to have a completely different tatemaya and honne. Oh, absolutely. As long as you just show the tatemaya to the right people yeah. and the honne to the right people or show it to no one, right? Um, and so when when you're in your everyday life, you have to share your tatemaya all the yes. time. But when you drink, yes. you can show your honne a little bit but then afterwards just attribute it to the alcohol so even if you're not really drunk you just take a sip and yes. then you can be forgiven for yes. something oh man it's like you know stereotype sacho son yeah you know like this the the ceo of a company yeah it's like normally during the day you wouldn't be allowed to talk to that guy or yeah. let alone be in the presence of him yeah as soon as you go to like you know a nomikai or something yeah, yeah. it's like all of a sudden the guy's best friends what, with what's you. a nomikai oh so it's like a like a work drinking party okay yeah. So it was like a drinking party after work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, uh, like, uh, I have the similar experience with, like, you know, principal yeah. and, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. senior staff at my school. It's yeah. like, you know, I don't really get to talk to those guys. Yeah, yeah. But as soon as the drinking party starts, you know, before COVID hit, yeah. it's like, <laughs> the yeah, guy right. was always, like, right next to me, his arms around. Really? Like, oh, Austin, you're my best friend. Yeah. It's like, all right, man. When I worked at that school, I think I talked with him, like, once, and that yeah. was it, just, like, saying hi. That was yeah. it. Man, okay, so so you talked a lot about like making friends at work and stuff. Mm. Oh wait, so you said also like one of the th- oh. rules as an adult is drinking. What's another thing? So the other one, um, this can be a couple things, okay. but uh, outdoor activities. Uh, like what do you mean? Um, biggest one I would say is hiking. hiking. Hiking is huge here. Yeah, absolutely. With all the huge. mountains, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's there's just a million. Like yeah. even in Tokyo, there's mm-hmm. like. You just go like 30 minutes outside Tokyo and there's mm-hmm. a million places to go mm-hmm. hiking. And um, there's a lot of outdoor communities mm-hmm. here. And um, so that's like another social thing that people yeah, do. Yeah. Is, you know, you get up on like a Saturday or Sunday, mm-hmm. get up at like 4 a.m., just zip out to the, you know, the mountains right outside Tokyo and go mm-hmm. hiking. And there's just tons of groups. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's, that's, uh, that's what I've found to be a uh, very good social activity like okay. if if maybe you you feel like uncomfortable uh meeting somebody you know yeah. like oh, i am kind of nervous my japanese isn't very mm-hmm. good uh i don't really want to go to a cafe with somebody yeah, yeah well a lot of people tend to uh enjoy hiking here yeah, so yeah. if you make a f- japanese friend you just go hey you know what do you want to do you want to just head out to the mountains mm-hmm. for a few hours and go hiking yeah, yeah. and it's one of those activities where you you don't need to be talking Mm -hmm. the whole time yeah you know and you both can you both can get something out of it you can Mm -hmm. appreciate like an experience together and i I feel like it's a really good bonding yeah uh so so you went hiking a lot with people yeah yeah i've uh i i go hiking with my coworkers. okay Uh, i've gone hiking with my friends and it's actually um it's been something that i just recently got into previously i wasn't a huge fan of it because i did a lot of it in the marines so okay um it's kind of tired of it but yeah i've recently uh, just started doing that, but previously I, I've had tons of friends who just immediately just mm-hmm. picked up on that okay. and started doing that. So, so you talked you talked about how like you you had a job, so you talked with your coworkers, you became friends with your coworkers, yeah. which is great. But you also said you have friends who are not your coworkers. How did you meet those guys? Well, uh, so uh, I have I have a few various hobbies. Yeah. Um, one of one of the hobbies that I have is uh, I'm actually a little bit of a nerd. Okay, I like uh, I like making models. Like what kind of models? Like uh, board games. Um, so do you make board games? I don't make oh, board games. Oh, but you I make, make models you make models for board games. Oh. So um, there's there's this there's this tabletop game called Warhammer. Oh yeah, Warhammer. That That's that what I was thinking. Really, of. really into. Yeah. Um, and so, really? I've I. I, I would see like the Warhammer shops in the mall in the yeah. States and I'm like, how does this work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have to talk about that another time. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. Um but it's uh you know, it's just something I like to do on my yeah. on my free time. You know, if I if I don't have anything going on, like I'll you know, play that or, you know, build some models. Mm-hmm. And so um 
as soon as I got here, mm -hmm. I just started searching around for that mm -hmm. community. And that kind of goes with what I was saying earlier. Yeah, it's yeah. like you find a hobby that you enjoy yeah. and there's a community here for it. Yeah. So um, that's actually where I have most of my foreign friends. Okay. And it's it's been a really wonderful experience because... I mean, other than you and like a couple other people, I don't yeah. really talk to any Americans. Yeah, me neither. It's it's really it's really a wonderful experience, honestly, yeah. because I mean, it's not, it's not that I don't want to talk to Americans, yeah, 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 yeah. but yeah, it it's, just happened it's, that way. It's it's wonderful in the in the concept that um, I'm I'm talking to so many people from mm -hmm. other countries, like I. Uh, like, look, one of my best friends is from the UK. I know mm -hmm. a couple other guys from UK. I know a ton of guys from France, which really surprised me. There's a France? huge French community here, which okay. I have no idea about. They're mostly up in Kumagaya, but um, they're kind of scattered around. Kumagaya is really far north. Yeah, yeah, Wait, yeah. why are they in Kumagaya? Uh, there's a, like, some auto factor, like, oh, automobile yeah, okay. so factory Kumagaya, or something. Yeah, so, yeah, actually, the only time I've been up to Kumagaya was because yeah. I was doing a project with a chemical factory sure. up there. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, there's a lot yeah. of factories up there and there's there's like some French or maybe it's a Japanese company, company that like has connections yeah, yeah, yeah. with France. Anyways, uh, so yeah, there's a lot of, I've got a lot of French buddies. Um, you know, every any European country you can think of, I've, I've got a buddy from there. Um, you know, friends from all yeah. over Asia. Like I've got a friend from Thailand, Vietnam, yeah. Philippines. Okay. Um, you know, everywhere. And uh, that, that's been a really wonderful experience mm -hmm. also. Um, so I, yeah, like I said, so, yeah, you talk about like meeting these people, but like, how do you find these people? Is it like meetup mainly? Um, so there's a, there's a number of ways. Okay. Um, for me, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a social media guy. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a rare butterfly in <laughs> 2021 Dude, because I, social media either. I, 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 you know, I, I understand its usefulness, yeah. but um, I, I just see people get addicted to it mm -hmm. and I see how toxic mm -hmm. it makes people. Yeah. Um, and so I try to avoid that. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm, I'm not saying social media is bad. I'm just saying from my for experience, yeah, yeah, like yeah. I just, I don't, I don't want to participate yeah, in yeah. that. But, uh, so for me, I just wander around. You, That's, you wander around, you go to like a new bar or something. Yeah, and you just I'll talk go with to a new there. bar or like specifically for, for Warhammer, just like, you know, Googled like a Warhammer store and just, you okay. know, wandered just in and just, you know, okay. talk to the staff and see who's there. Um, but yeah. it's it's like the same thing for uh, Facebook, though. There's like yeah. a million Facebook groups here. Yeah, that you right. can just kind of join and just kind of figure it out. Yeah. Um, like my, my coworker, yeah. uh, she, she was also in the jet program. She mm -hmm. returned to America, but, uh, when she came here, she was really into softball. Okay. And, um, she's half Japanese. So okay. she, she was already more, you know, capable with the language than I was when yeah, I, yeah. when I came here. But, um, so all she did was just, you know, search for a little softball club okay. near her apartment. And so every, every Sunday she would mm -hmm. just go out and play search softball with just complete strangers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's about finding that activity that you yeah. want. And you don't necessarily have to like go to meetup.com. You can yes. just search it online. In, in fact, I would say I, I would actually avoid that. Well, if, why would if, you avoid meetup? Because I think, um, I think when you first move over here, there's a lot of pressure involved mm -hmm. with like forming friends. Mm -hmm. And I think with, um, you know, going to these, these like, you know, international parties or, mm -hmm. you know, going just like with groups of people mm -hmm. for this specific purpose of just talking. Okay. Um, I, I find that that kind of puts like this pressure. Uh, yeah, I guess. You know what I mean? I guess your image of meetup and my image of meetup is different. But yeah, like you said, Fair. you know, here, here's the thing, right? So like, this is what I'm listening to with you, right? Yeah. And I totally, I totally agree with you. You need to find your common point, your common interest. And yes. that's a way to build friends, right? Yeah. But here's the thing, like most people outside of anime and manga, mm. they don't really know I feel like a lot of people just aren't aware of what they like to do. And so they go to those meetup groups, which is just yeah. to like, let's chat about what? Let's make friends. Why? Yeah. I, let's just do it because we're all lonely. Yeah. It's like, okay, you're all lonely SOBs. So like, it's not going to be a fun time. And yeah. so like for me, my image of meetup is like, I, you know, I'm busy. I have a family and stuff yeah. and I'm doing my own business. I don't have time to go to like, hey, let's talk with a bunch of lonely people who want to make friends. No, but there's, there's yeah. a lot of, meet, like there's a sake meetup group. Yeah. That. When COVID's over, I'm going there because, you know, I love that stuff. But yeah, I think you can find the common interest. It's just the key is, the key is to like, not just try to make friends to make friends. Yes. But to like find a common Absolutely. point. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I completely agree. And you know, like if, if, if you're that kind of person that yeah. you were describing earlier that maybe, maybe you don't know what mm -hmm. you like, mm -hmm. my recommendation 
just go outside. Yeah, yeah. You know, the worst thing you can do is just sit in your room yeah. and watch Netflix. At least go to a bar. Go to a bar or, you know, maybe if you're, if you're not even that comfortable with like, you know, putting yourself in that environment, just go to like Odaiba or something. Just mm-hmm. go to, go, go somewhere and just kind of people watch. I do. Yeah. You know? So um, I have, um, I, I would tell people to avoid Shinjuku and Roppongi though, <laughs> because I, I just got to share, I got to share this with you, man. So like I lived in Nakano and Nakano, yeah. I chose Nakano because it was easy to get to Shibuya, right? Yeah. Um, but to get to Shibuya, you need to make a transfer at Shinjuku, right? Yeah. And so I got a train pass that allowed me to... So one thing that we can talk about later is just how expensive like train passes and <laughs> yeah. stuff. It's like you can only use it for the, the route that you decide. You can't use it outside for yeah. free. But yeah, so with that, I could go to Shinjuku for free. So I was like, awesome. Yeah. I've heard of Shinjuku. I've never been there. I don't know what's there, but I hear it's really big. Let's go look. So it's around like 8 p.m. at night and I have my my take, my, my card, right? My my train pass and I'm like great let's go explore because it's just like that I don't want to be in my apartment so I go out yeah. I go out the east exit all the way down to Kabukicho oh, and I, I didn't know what Kabukicho was sure. and then within like five minutes five Nigerian guys come and be like hey do you want to see boobs <laughs> and you want a good time and I'm just like okay yeah. I yes and Roppongi's like that too you know yeah I, I think Roppongi's the place if you have a destination in Roppongi, yeah. it's a very fun experience. But yeah, I, I agree. I wouldn't just go wander around there. Yeah. Um, what's what's a place that you really like to wander around? I have two places. Yeah. Uh, number one is Shibuya. Shibuya, yeah. I, and I, I think most people Dude, would yeah. say that. Shibuya yeah. is the perfect or perfect place to just wander. Yeah. You can be out there all night. And you, you, Especially you, if you go like kind of in the back. Yes. Yeah. You know, there's lots um, of small shops. There. And specifically, uh, if you find yourself here in Tokyo um, during certain parts of the year, um, something that I highly recommend mm-hmm. is going to Shibuya during Halloween. Okay. Because it is such... <laughs> ah, dude, pandemonium. <laughs> it is such... It's it's crazy. It's pure yeah. chaos. There's yeah. just millions of people there. There's yeah. foreigners, there's Japanese people. Yeah. There's this like all walks of life, all yeah. ages there. It's it's such a crazy experience, but yeah. it's 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 beautiful. Yeah, because you just see such fun stuff and there. People are really open to talking. And to people you are know? very open, and not even specifically in Halloween. Just like just in general, mm-hmm. people are usually very open to communicate mm-hmm. in Shibuya, mm-hmm. especially around the train station. You always yeah, see yeah. people, you know, doing doing YouTube stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or or just or just like random people holding out signs like, "Hey, I want to talk to some random person." Yeah, yeah, you know, right, right. You'll you'll always find someone to talk yeah. to in Shibuya. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You may not want to talk to them, but you will but find they, them. Yeah. So other than Shibuya, where else do you like to go? Uh, personally, I am a huge fan of Harajuku. Harajuku? Yeah, I'm, I'm real school with that. wait why why, why oh it, it makes me nostalgic man okay uh because so, you went there a long time ago or oh yeah yeah when i was a high school student okay. harajuku was the cool place okay you know it, when you were high school it, it, when i was a high school or maybe yeah. maybe shibuya was still popular i don't know i was yeah. a kid back then but like harajuku was cool that was like yeah. the edgy part of town yeah. where it's like you saw all the, like the the goth lolita mm-hmm. stuff yeah, and, yeah you know you saw like that was like where all the teenagers hung out yeah, yeah. um which i guess sounds really creepy that i said that i like that now <laughs> Yeah, but um, but it's like a memory. It's a place of memories it's, for you. It's you know? not only that, but it's it's a really fun place because you just you still see weird stuff there. Yeah. Um. So it's it's kind of just fun to walk around and you see shops and yeah, it's dude, a little touristy. Dude, say, have you seen the old guy with like the the Fu Manchu like mustache and like he has like the toilet seat of hair that's graying and he pulls it down. He wears like a a sailor outfit, like a schoolgirl's outfit. Not seen that. Dude. It's it's the he 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 goes there frequently <laughs> really? and so like i think it's on the weekends because i've mm. seen him there at least five times mm. and i've even seen him on the internet too but he's like this guy with like this goatee or like this like facial hair which is kind of rare for guys in japan i guess yeah but yeah it's just like he looks like a regular old dude and he's wearing like this this girl's school <laughs> uniform and it's at first i was like what the hell but then he does it every week and i'm like cool yeah that's weird. See lots of weird things there um but yeah, I, I really love Harajuku yeah. um, because there's there's actually a lot of really good hidden restaurants there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, especially if you go like, yeah. so you have Takeshi Dori, right? Yeah. But if you go to like the left side, yes. of it, so if you're walking from Harajuku Station, you go to the left side, there's mm-hmm. a lot of stuff hidden there that people yes. don't know about. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of good restaurants there. Yeah. And uh, another reason I really like it is really close to Yogi Park. Yeah. And uh, 
that's one of my favorite parks in Tokyo. Okay. It's it's just a really good drinking place. Yeah. Um, especially if you're like, you like you plan on going to Shibuya later. Yeah, yeah. So you'll you know you'll show up, meet maybe meet some mm-hmm. friends in Yoyogi Park. Maybe you'll have like a drinking picnic or yeah. something, and then you'll go to Shibuya, mm-hmm. which is very very close. It's the yeah. next train station over. Um, so there's there's just a lot of like really mm-hmm. uh, fun activities to do okay. um, in Harajuku. Um, another place that I would recommend, this is actually outside of Tokyo, okay. is Kawasaki. I mean, that's that's where I live. That's where we are right now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, yeah. the Kawasaki Station. Kawasaki Station. Okay, okay. It's it's inside. I mean, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. It's inside a California style shopping mall. The actual station yeah. called La Zona, okay. and. Um, especially for Americans who are coming here. And so like, I am a West Coast guy, yeah, so yeah. I felt right at home. There was yeah. a CPK, California Pizza Kitchen there. Okay. They, they wow. had a, oh uh, God, there was a couple, they have a Panda Express. What? Like the only Panda Express I've ever In seen. In Kawasaki? Yes. Dude, and I gotta go for, there. The, for those of you who don't know what Panda Express is, it is the lowest of low quality Chinese. You can't even call it Chinese food. It's like, it's like. It's the McDonald's of Chinese it's food. It's the McDonald's of Chinese food. But God, I love it so much, man. It makes me so nostalgic. I love Panda Express. Dude. And so they have it in the food court yeah, yeah. there. And I remember the first time I saw it and I was just like, dude, I, I don't even care how mm-hmm. much MSG I'm about to consume. Mm-hmm. I am getting a massive plate of slop and noodles. Oh, man. <laughs> from Panda Express. Yeah, it's a good it's a good way to break in, I guess. Oh, God. You know? Actually, so one of my friends from Seattle, he lives in Kawasaki yeah. now too. So, like, for me, though, personally for me, I really like, um, and this is probably going to be hard for for people, for some people to try mm. to get into, but it's that Shitamachi area, like, the really local small bars that seat, oh, yeah. like, 15 people. Sure. Um, Nakano has a lot of places yeah. like that. Oh, um, Kichijoji, so too. I, li- I lived yeah. on the Chuo line, sure. so I'm, I'm more familiar with that place. But one of my friends lives in Kiba. He lives mm. near... Um, like in the Shitamachi area, like the old town area. Squeeze and some of this. Dude, yeah. Be careful, man. It's all right. We're mixing now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so for those of you guys who are just listening, Austin moved from the Aomori to the Sake, and we'll see what happens. But um, but yeah, so like in um, Monze Nakacho or like Kiba or like that area, kind of on the Tokyo Metro yeah. area, there's a lot of like small places that when you look at them it's like holy crap how am i am i allowed to go there yeah but if you go there the two things will happen one will be someone will be like ah sorry no thank you yeah. or they'll be like ah come on cool american guy hey yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like those things right uh, it's I, i'm glad you mentioned nakameguro because um that's another place that i really wanted to talk about because okay. that is like the restaurant place in tokyo for okay. me okay okay um there is there's countless okay countless delicious restaurants there yeah. specifically though mm-hmm. for those of you who like mexican food yeah there is the in my opinion yeah. best mexican restaurant in, in all of tokyo mm-hmm. called junkadelic in nakameguro in nakameguro i've never been there i have to go there it is it's it's a little bit on the pricey side i yeah. will warn uh not too pricey though you're, you're looking at probably about like 20 bucks a plate yeah or 2,000 yen per plate that's that's a lot for japan it is yeah. It is. But you get big portions. Okay. They're like big proper okay. like Mexican food portions. Okay. Um What about not... like what about Guzman and Gomez? Like that's you have that chain kind of thing. Yeah. No. Dude, you gotta you, you okay. gotta come to Junkadel. We, we need to go man. to Junkadel. Please Junkadelic's next time amazing. we gotta go there together. Okay. Amazing. I, I have yeah. so many horror stories when it comes to Mexican food. Yeah. Um Yeah, Mexican food seems to be like the one type of food that isn't readily available in Tokyo. Well, <laughs> It depends on what you define readily available because I have been to many, many restaurants uh, that claim to have Mexican food here okay. that served me nachos, yeah. which turned out to be Doritos and spray cheese. Yeah, no, I mean like real, I mean like real <laughs> you know I mean? like Mexican food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like stuff that, yeah. Um, but yeah, you got to go to Junkadelic. That's, okay. it's, it's like the, I, I cannot recommend it enough. Okay. It's, it, it is on par with okay. like San Diego Mexican restaurants. Really? Wow. It's that authentic and delicious. Okay. And they are the only place that I have found yeah. that gives me a proper proportion of tequila. Oh, really? In my margaritas. Okay. Most most of the Mexican places I go here, when I order a margarita, I get a frozen 
fruit drink with yeah. like a little pinch of tequila. Well, I mean, it's I like, mean, come on. If, if like <laughs> if like the average Japanese person had a shot of tequila, they'd probably die. Dude, oh, I don't things, think so, man. I, I can't handle tequila. I love tequila. It's my but, favorite drink. But anyways, we've been going for about fifty minutes, so we should probably wrap up oh, this yeah. episode. But we we talked a lot about like making friends and stuff and yeah, other yeah, things yeah. too. But let's see next time in the next episode, let's talk about what it's like to live and work in Japan. It's mainly gonna be you. Ooh. I'm self employed, but I sure. want to hear your experience working yes. at a school and maybe yeah. stuff you've heard from your friends too. Yeah, yeah. I I I have a lot to say about okay. that because um like you said, I, I've yeah. worked at a school for about five years now, mm-hmm. and you know I have a lot of good things to say. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I still live here, still yeah. want to live here, but I have a lot of negative stuff yeah. to say too. So it's it's kind of one of those things that um, yeah, yeah, I think people should know about. Yeah, we'll share that next yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Okay.